I honestly think, and other people have said so, it's the most beautiful building in Washington. Of course, I could be prejudiced. The National Museum of Women in the Arts opened in 1987, just three blocks from the White House. In creating the museum, Mrs. Holliday began with a simple idea. To show the contribution of women to the history of art. That really is it. Because nobody knew it. And I walked in the front door and there's all this marble and all this open space and all this beautiful art. And I just thought, my God, it's a palace to women's creativity. Yeah, it gives you a feeling of power, like, wow, you, ugh, I missed all of this. And a lot of it, you know the art, but you didn't know it was women doing it, right? Billy and Wally did this together. They created the collection, they created the museum. Mrs. Holliday oftentimes said that she relied on Wally's eye because he himself was an architect and he really had an artistic sensibility. He was totally supportive, totally. The collection for the museum really starts with the Cat and the Fish by Clara Peters. I think anyone who looks at the Clara Peters painting of the fish and the cat can't help but know it's a great work of art. It's meaningful because it was the beginning. So I wondered why we didn't know her. Wally laughingly said maybe it's because she's a woman. And then we did research. She wasn't in any book we could find. But not only was there no information on Peters, there was no information on any women artists, whether it was Jansen's History of Art or Helen Gardner's Art Through the Ages. Since we knew there had been great women artists, that that would be the focus of our collection had no idea about a museum. Because we traveled very, very widely, wherever we went, we would go into the top commercial gallery and say, what do you have by a woman? The discoveries we made were fantastic. It almost was like a house museum, because every Thursday, Mrs. Holliday would open the house to visitors. This was in the early 80s. She never expected to create a museum of women in the arts from her collection. But people told her she should. She recognized the value of the idea. She leaned in and she made it happen. That's a new twist. You know, if you look at when she started this museum, she was in her 60s, and to me, that is just so inspiring, and I think it's something that's often overlooked. I think the best anecdote to talk about that passion and that tenacity is actually the, the purchase of this building. It was originally a Masonic temple. It was in real disrepair. These buildings were, on one hand, a Masonic temple, and on the other hand, a porno parlor called the Brown Bagger. Mrs. Holliday describes that there were rats everywhere, that there was water falling from the ceiling. It, it was a mess. The whole place was a mess. But as she often says, Wally's ideas as an architect and saner heads prevailed. They bought the building for a very good price. She saw the future. It do reminds me a lot of my grandparents' connection. It was that combination of the two of them coming together that enabled them to purchase this amazing piece of property. From the very beginning, I said, I really want a classy act. The design of the Great Hall with its three beautiful crystal chandeliers, they were given by three different women as gifts to the museum. To me, is a classy act. So a fulfilled kind of a dream of mine. 
When it opened, it was quite controversial. Well, the feminists came and they said, this is some white glove establishment. This is not for us. And the old dowagers came and said, this is some feminist thing. They all printed it everywhere. And it helped put us on the map. My response was, you are absolutely right. It would be ideal if all the art was treated equally. Unfortunately, it's not. In order to show their work, they're gonna need a place to show it in that is what? Welcoming to them, welcoming to them. We weren't really thinking about a women's museum. We were thinking about integrating the men's museum, right? And she said, no, that's not it. <laughs> We want a whole new game. <laughs> That's great. She could do it. Art can be a catalyst for social change and for empowering women and girls. Here I feel like women do have an equal footing with men. They've got a place of their own and it is wonderful work, it's beautiful place and we can celebrate that. The museum has made a great difference uh, in the lives of women artists. For many of them it's the first time their work is actually in a public collection. Our Julie Taymor exhibition, Playing with Fire, was a really popular exhibition, but exposed Tamor when she was really little known, even though she'd already created The Lion King on Broadway. There was broken glass. There were pigeons roosting in an armoire. When they pulled out the artwork, the art began to flake off of the canvas itself. We gave them $150,000 for conservation to make these works whole, and then we showed them at the museum. Dr. Piotrowski, he said, these paintings came from the Hermitage? And I said, yes. He said, are you sure? I said, I'm very sure. He said, I have never seen them before. Well, let me tell you, they're now all hanging in the Hermitage, and he tells me they'll be there forever. That's the kind of lasting effect you hope to have. That's the kind of impact the museum can have. So amazing to learn the background to many of these artists, the struggles that they had to overcome in order to become artists, to be recognized as artists, um, and in some cases to be able to hear that from the artists themselves. What I've always admired about Mrs. Holiday is that she is able to change with the times. The museum's collection has grown to include more contemporary artists, and her message to women artists now is that if we show your work, if we are able to collect your work, you will not be forgotten. And there has been a lot of women's art that is unrecognized through the centuries, huh? All over the world. How many people could name five women artists from the Renaissance to the present? Eva Gonzalez. Clara Peters. Sarah Bernhardt. Carrie Weems. Lavinia Fontana. Peter Coyne. Elisabetta Serrani. Julie Taymor.
very careful to be able to tell important stories with the works that we have in the collection. We have a major collection of over 500 artists' books, and that is one of the key collections that people come to see. Inside the books are wonderful drawings and poems, and the binding is also beautiful. It was a time when women's art was terrifically undervalued. I mean, one couldn't put together this collection that we have of historical work today. I must say that it's been very reassuring that we chose wisely. For instance, we bought Barrett Morisot and just recently at auction, she was it brought in the highest amount of money, seven million dollars. And I think we paid 30,000, you know. They listed five women who had brought in the most money, and we had all five of them. So many people have become interested and have been generous. Now, there are 4,500 works for people to enjoy. The museum will continue to be solid. Fundraising is key, but her Harvard business lesson would be that you have to friend raise always before you fundraise. You know, I think as time goes on, the headline that you'll be able to write on the story of the National Museum of Women in the Arts is going to be bigger and bolder and more exciting. Her whole struggle doing it, the way she thought it up, the way she continued until it was done, and the way it's still being carried on today. This is, this is a very powerful woman. Mrs. Holliday, you're an inspiration. Thank you so much for everything you've done. You inspire me every day. I want to be just like you when I grow up. Thank you for making your dream into a reality. I know it means so much to me and to so many of the people who work and are associated with this museum. It means so much to us to be able to continue to champion women in the arts. Mrs. Holliday, I'd like to thank you for your leadership and mentorship and creating the museum where I've spent all of my professional life. Our Thursday meetings are the best meetings of our week, including the tea and cookies. Beal, thank you for the legacy you've left our family. You've taught us to strive for excellence in work, in philanthropy, and even marriage. We love you. <laughs>